Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to reduce inflammation by choosing the lesser evil. We're going to touch on perfectionism today, and perfectionism in the healing process, how it can actually hold us back, how the pursuit of perfection actually causes us a lot more stress, a lot more inflammation and a slower healing process. I'm going to present you with I think two, maybe three anecdotes of personal experience that myself and my clients have, have had. And I'm going to share these to help you understand how we can reduce inflammation. We can speed up the healing process by choosing the lesser evil and taking the less perfect route. Reducing inflammation by choosing the lesser evil. What does this actually even mean? So in the pursuit of healing, we are doing certain things. We are eating a certain way. We are making certain lifestyle choices. We are basing our decisions on a hierarchy of values where we are trying to orient ourselves so that the choices we make are going to reflect in a positive health outcome. That's basically what we're trying to do. However, when we take this to the extreme, as with anything, healing is not at the extreme. You're not going to find healing here. Healing comes from a place of balance. So we have to ask the question, when we're in these tricky situations, how do we find this, this balance? This brings me to my first anecdote. So I'm actually sunburned right now. My back is extremely hot, it's covered in aloe, and it's extremely uncomfortable, but it's kind of what's inspired this video today. So I'm pretty sure, any if you're watching this video, you probably already know this, wearing sunscreen or sun cream is, is toxic. There are a lot of toxic chemicals in sun cream. There are some other options that have a different different ingredients, a different formulation that are, that are less toxic than certain other sun creams. And obviously, these can be these can be better from a toxic perspective. However, I don't have a non-toxic sunscreen on, on me. I'm, I've just arrived in the Canary Islands. The, the UV index here is extremely high. And I mean, I've, just before this, I've been walking around in Athens and it was extremely hot there. We were talking 24, 26 degrees Celsius, very sunny all day. I didn't wear any sun cream or anything. And I didn't get any sunburn at all, even spending the whole day out. We arrived here in Las Palmas in Gran Canaria and just going for a 40 minute walk, I got sunburn all over my face and this absolutely shocked me. So we went to, to look for some for some sun cream and obviously unless like this some, Las Palmas is an island So you, your options are limited. I can't just ship something from Amazon. It's not that simple So we ended up going to buy uh, just a generic sun cream at the supermarket And I was looking through the list of ingredients and I was like, oh my god I would rather not read these ingredients. The thing is you have to weigh up your options in a situation like this So my first option is don't wear any sun cream knowing how hot it is, that's going to really limit what I'm able to do. You know, I just arrived in an island city. I want to go to the beach. I want to lay in the sun. I want to go for a swim. And uh, so I decided what's important for me right now, what's important for my healing is the really positive experience. I need to experience joy. And I did this with my wife and it was a really nice bonding and connecting moment. It was also very productive. I felt really inspired. It was really, it was the right thing for me to do. And I wore sun cream. However, I, obviously I didn't wear enough because now I have, a, an ex, <laughs> I have a really bad sunburn on my back. But the lesson here is you have to evaluate your options. Doing what looks perfect and like perfect on paper is very rarely the perfect option. Obviously I could have just chosen to not go, but the whole point of healing is so that you can live again. If you're sacrificing your life in the name of healing, you've lost the whole point. What are you healing for? You're healing so you can live again. And for me, part of living again is eating food that I love and traveling and being able to go on the beach and swimming in the ocean. You know, that's why I'm healing. So if I don't do these things in the name of healing, I've kind of, I'm shooting myself in the foot. It doesn't make any sense. There's no point. So I took the lesser evil and I wore the sun cream. I did still end up with a burn, however. But my point being here is, yes, there are toxic chemicals in sun cream and I putting them all over my skin, I've brought them into my body and my, my body's gonna have to detox them. My liver's gonna have to work through them. You know, phase one, phase two, liver detoxification pathways, squirt it out in the bile. It's probably antibiotic in nature as well and it's gonna disrupt my gut microbiome. But my body's strong, it can handle it. And you have to evaluate what is gonna be more harmful. Is it gonna be more harmful to have this sort of formulation of toxic chemicals, which definitely is harmful to some extent, or a severe sunburn. And when you think about how bad sunburns can actually be, you are creating an enormous amount of inflammation when you have a sunburn. If you're trying to have an, uh, an anti-inflammatory diet, if you're trying to have an anti-inflammatory lifestyle, it's rarely going to be perfect. You're always gonna have trade-off situations. And in these trade-off situations, you have to choose the lesser evil. So for me, in this circumstance, the lesser evil was buy some commercial sun cream and rub it all over myself and deal with the toxins. 
and my body can handle that, but I'm actually sunburn and I can feel my body struggling significantly more with the consequences of the sunburn than from applying the sun cream. That's one example for you. Another one, another example, and this is something I've experienced. This is a, for me, like click of my fingers, I can make this decision and it's not even hard anymore. But I know some people really struggle with this. So let me give you a, an example. Say you're traveling. We've run into this, this problem recently, but I've also had some clients that run into this kind of problem. Let's say you're traveling and you're, you want to eat the, the, your diet the perfect way. You know, right now my wife is tending towards more of a carnivorous, there you go, carnivorous diet. Obviously that means eating more meat and less of other things, you know, less bread, less, less dairy, less vegetables, more, more of a meat approach. However, when you're traveling, it's really hard, you know, your options are very limited. And even of those limited options, the things that fit into the category of foods that you that you want, they're normally really expensive, like absurdly overpriced, like buying a fairly poor quality steak for 60 euros in an airport is it, to me, it's just insane. It's just not worth it. But you have to consider what is going to do you more harm? Is it going to be more harmful for you to eat, let's say, for example, a McDonald's? And I'm using this as the example because this is what actually happened. You know, when we were traveling, I had McDonald's in the airport. I actually love traveling because it means I get to have a McDonald's. And yes, I know there's gluten in the bun. There's vegetable oil. The cheese. Is it really cheese? Is it plastic? I don't really know. The thing that I do know is that is less harmful to me than traveling with blood sugar imbalances, than traveling without having eaten anything because my body isn't ready to handle that kind of stress in a fasted state. And if you if you can do that, and if that's actually healthy for you, then do it, you know, awesome, good for you. But I'm still in this healing process and you're still gonna have bad days sometimes. You know, I had a phenomenal three week period about a month back and my health was the best that it's ever been. And since then, I've had a bit of a dip. I've had a bit of a slump. And this is the non-linearity of the healing process. It's never going to be perfect all of the time. Sometimes you have to dip so you can reach the higher level. So it's about taking the lesser evil option. So in this case, eating some suboptimal food in a circumstance where either it's financially unviable or the fact that you, that the stress of traveling would be too much for your body to handle without food to choose to eat a suboptimal food. This is all contextual, you know? If this was me five years ago, if this was me seven years ago, it would have been less harmful for me to just not eat anything. Because although it would be extremely stressful for me to go without food and I would be having blood sugar imbalances, eating something that had gluten in, eating something that had fiber in, eating something processed like a McDonald's would have triggered autoimmunity, it would have triggered many gut problems, severe chronic fatigue, depression. So this is all contextual, but this is, this is, at the essence of healing, what it is, is learning how to make attuned decisions based on your current health situation. As my wife is tending towards a car more of a carnivore diet, I am also tending that way. I'm tending towards eating more animal products. And I got, I got a bit of extra weight at the minute. Par for the course, standard process healing from adrenal fatigue. As your body moves from being completely distressed all of the time to starting to calm down a little bit, your body will hold a little bit of extra extra weight. Think about the weight as kind of a, being a bit of padding for stress. So it helps your body respond to stress. So going from being chronically malnourished and underweight for a five year time period, it's very normal to gain a little bit of weight after that. And that's the stage that my body's in right now. However, I don't like that. I don't think anybody likes having a little bit more weight than, than they're comfortable with. And this, this leads me to think, okay, let's tend towards a keto diet. Let's eat less carbohydrates and refined carbohydrates so that we can stabilize the insulin and the leptin and the ghrelin and the other appetite and satiety hormones. Let's do some fasting. And I'm doing this and it's working. But when I was when we were on the way to the beach this morning, we just broke a fast yesterday. We did a, Joanna did a 36 hour fast and I did a 24 hour fast again, because I had two appointments that day. And I knew doing that, that whole day without having any food was not helpful. It's really important that we stick to our schedule of fasting on Fridays because it really works for us. And I do best with 36 hours, but I know if I have a lot of stress and I was, I had to walk about 13,000 steps and I met two new people that I've never met as practitioners. So it was a bit of a complex process, you know, learning how to use public transport in a new city, lots and lots of stressors. Doing it fasted, not the best idea. So I ended up having breakfast and doing these things. It's the lesser evil. It did mean that I didn't get to do a 36 hour fast, but I still did a 24 hour fast and I was a lot more kind to myself. I was a lot more gentle with myself and I have an aura ring. So I can track my stress 
and I can see that since changing time zone, since traveling, my body is, is really struggling to adapt to this new time zone. It's peaking at being in this stressed zone, like fairly consistently on most days. And it made me think, this is, what I'm doing is not right for my body at the minute. My body doesn't wanna be doing keto right now. It needs a little bit more carbs while it adapts to this stress. And then when I'm through this, when I'm adapted here, when I'm not healing this really bad sunburn, when I've kicked this little virus that I'm, that I'm dealing with, then would be the appropriate time to maybe cut the carbs back down and maybe explore doing a little bit more longer term fasting. So what healing is, the essence of the energy of healing is not being so extreme one way or the other, it's learning how to attune to yourself and to your body. And then taking all of the knowledge that you have about gut health, about different types of diets, about inflammation and toxins and all of these things that you know, but then not just doing them to the extreme. It's calibrating them, it's attuning them to where your body is on a daily basis and adjusting for that. That is the essence of healing. And that is what you are trying to learn as you heal. Yes, you need all the information and all of this, all of this understanding to be able to make these decisions well. But what I'm trying to emphasize to you here is, if you want to heal, if you want to reduce your inflammation, if you want to heal your gut, if you want to balance your hormones, whatever it is that you want to do, you can't be doing extreme mm -hmm. things because that's not where healing is. Healing is about balance and balance is found in the middle and it requires attunement. It's not about doing what you want. It's not about doing what you would like healing to be. It's about learning what healing is and then figuring out how you can apply what you know to the circumstance that you find yourself in at the time and making sure that it is, the key word here is attuned. And this basically means that what you're doing is calibrated and appropriate to the context, to the situation. For example, I know a lot about healing. I could have pushed myself to fast all of today in the name of autophagy, in the name of detox. I could do a more restricted diet. I could force myself to not put sun cream on and stay in my house and be miserable. That's not how healing works. I knew that my recipe was, I need joy. I need to enjoy myself. I need to go out in the sun and have a good time. I need to be able to relax. I need to be able to unwind. I wanna go in the ocean. I need to be able to have fun. And did that mean rubbing sun cream all over me? When I was, yes, it did. When I was walking to, to the beach and I'm, I'm, I can feel the stress in my body and I can feel I'm having heart palpitations because my body is really struggling. And I really tuned into my heart and I was saying, I kind of, <laughs> the, my self-talk isn't always the kindest. It was kind of like, what the are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? And then it was saying like, I'm struggling. I need I need help. Like, help me. And I was like, how am I, how, how am I hurting it? What am I doing wrong? I was like, oh, I haven't had any carbs today. Maybe I need to have some carbs today. And that ended up with me having a, a pastry in the, in a supermarket with, with apple and cinnamon. Not, wouldn't be my choice, but that's what I went towards. And yes, it had gluten in it. Was it the perfect food choice? I would actually argue yes at the time. It actually was. I personally don't really feel any negative effects from having gluten. Doesn't affect my gut at all. Doesn't affect any of my other symptoms. I actually had it. The heart palpitation stopped immediately. I felt much brighter. My energy came back and my body was responding. And this is what's really important when you're healing is learning how to trust yourself, learning that healing is actually about feeling good. If you're doing things that are making you suffer, if you're doing things that are, you're basically torturing yourself in the name of healing, you're actually doing it completely the wrong way. Healing is a gentle, it's a loving, it's a supportive, it's a patient, it's a feel good energy. And if that isn't what you're feeling, then you're not actually in the energy of healing, even if you're doing it in the name of healing. It's not about doing it for healing. You have to be in the energy of healing if you want it. So that's the end of today's video. I'm gonna go and enjoy my sunburn looking forward to that um, we've got some nice aloe cream is it the perfect after sun no it has some chemicals in it am i happy about it no i'm not is this the the lesser evil in this situation yes it is so i will go and slather some aloe infused chemical solution over my shoulders and that's what healing is for me today take care and i'll see you in the next one bye